Hi everyone, uh, in this video, we are going to discuss specifically about uh, distribution system, uh, which is a part of wireless LAN, and we will discuss the extended service set, and we also discuss independent service set. So the wireless distribution system, what's that? For example, we have this uh, basic uh, wireless LAN, which we discussed in some previous video. That, for example, this is a wireless LAN. We have the access point and we have different nodes, which are actually no, which are actually known as stations, and they are in association. Association means this client has sent some request and this access point has accepted that request, and they are in association. And they are using their uh, information or they are using uh, their resources or exchanging information but they are just bound to that access point and such type of network we call that of course this is a wireless LAN, but we call that standalone network and then they have a specific region for uh, them to communicate because access point has an antenna and that antenna has some uh, range to cover but now for example one of the nodes are all of them all of them wants to get connected with the internet or some other network then what happens in that case luckily this access point also have a wired link as well so in addition to facilitating this wireless node this access point also has this wired uh, node as well sorry wired uh, property or characteristics that we can connect this cable with that so we have this cable connection so this can be part of the wired network as well so why using this distribution system so this distribution system is the ethernet part which is going to connect this bss our basic service set to the rest of the network or to some other network so this is known as distribution system now this distribution system is actually sorry this this uh, access point this access point is going to map the virtual lane to an ssid for example we have a traffic some of the traffic is coming from some vlan maybe for example we said vlan 10 then this vlan 10 traffic has to go to some ssid because this wireless LAN is being represented by some SSID. For example, this is SSID, for example, maybe the name of your university. So maybe I say that the SSID name is Uni. It means now VLAN traffic is going to be mapped to this Uni SSID. And this mapping is going to be done by this access point because access point has a connection to this wired network as well as to wireless network. So this provides mapping from VLAN to SSID. Or we can say this is going to take the traffic from VLAN and it's going to send it to the SSID. So this is the basic job of this uh, access point in addition to providing the wireless connectivity to the nodes. This provides the, this mapping. And now we can also have multiple VLAN. So instead of a single VLAN, we can have multiple VLANs. And those multiple VLANs, for example, here we have, for example, if you say VLAN 10, we can have VLAN 20, we can have VLAN 30. So these all VLANs, so these all VLANs may may are in, they may be interested in some different SSIDs. So for example, we have uni SSID. We can also have campus as a SSID. So we can have like campus. We have second SSID, this campus, and we have different VLANs on that side. So now in that case, this access point will provide mapping from multiple VLANs to multiple SSIDs. So multiple VLANs can be connected with multiple SSIDs using trunk link. Now it means this link has to be configured as a trunk. And if you remember, then trunk is going to carry the traffic from multiple VLANs at the same time. 
So VLAN 10, VLAN 20, VLAN 30, this, this all traffic from these all VLANs can travel on this trunk link. And then this multi VLANs can be mapped to multiple BSSs. And these BSSs will have, of course, multiple different identifiers or multiple SSIDs. Now this is the job of this, this uh, access point to perform this job, okay? So, for example, if I say this VLAN 10, this is VLAN 20, this is VLAN 30, so these are different VLANs, but these all traffic wants to go to different SSID, SSID 1, SSID 2, SSID 3. Who's going to perform that job? This is the job of this access point. So simple is that. So this, this this is how actually we are going to extend this network with the help of this distribution system. So this, this is known as distribution system. And uh, yes. Now the next point is extended service set. Extended service set, for example, at the moment we have one wireless LAN. So we have one wireless LAN and we are happy with that. We have one access point. We are able to exchange information with each other. Now, if you want to, so yeah, so this will not be possible that one access point may cover the complete area where we want to uh, offer this wireless LAN services. For example, a, 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 a big shopping mall, a big uh, building uh, organization where there may be different departments. So we want to provide the Wi-Fi service with the same SSID maybe to the users. Maybe some of them are on the ground floor, some of them are on the first floor, some of them are on the third floor, but we want to provide all of the clients or of the users the Wi-Fi service. So in this case, what is the option? Option is that we can combine two or more VSS to provide seamless services to the client and those combination is known as extended service set. And in extended service set, the clients, the all clients which are actually supported maybe by different access points, but they all can see the same SSID. Even if they are on the ground floor, even if they are on the first floor, but everywhere they will send the same ID and you may have experienced this thing that if you are in, in multi-story building, you may see the same name on different floors. This is possible by using multiple access points. Now, in this case, if one client, maybe from ground floor, if this client is going to um, on the first floor, on the second floor, so the clients, clients can use a roaming when moving from one access point to another access point. So this roaming term has been taken from maybe from mobile communication, for example, and if you want to go from one country to another country, then, then you have to activate the roaming facilities so that you should be able to use those mobile services in your country as well. So roaming is also available in this uh, wireless LAN. So what happens? The user, if that user is in one access point, then user can move to another access point without any disruption in the service, so without any disconnection in the service, because this will be managed by this extended service, and the user can have or can enjoy the service even if it is going to move from one access point to another. This is this is roaming. And the new access point may be using different frequency channel, or that may be using the same. We don't know, but at the uh, purpose is that the mobile or the user, wireless user, can enjoy continuously the Wi-Fi services. The same is the case in mobile communication as well. We can we can you we can go from tower to tower. tower or we are just like driving it. Maybe I don't know what speed, but we may move from one tower to another, but we will not have any disruption in the services if the service operator is good. Yeah, so this is this is some basic terms of extended service. If we want to extend the service set, so whatever region is there, we are we want to extend by deploying multiple access points in, in that geographic area. And final point is the independent basic service set. So 
sorry in independent basic service set what happen for example we were not maybe this, this connection to the rest of the network is broken and even this this access uh, points are not working we are just <coughs> there and maybe is this access point is also not working so so this is not working so is there any possibility that these nodes should be able to communicate with each other and the answer is yes the stations can also communicate directly in an ad hoc fashion and that is known as ibss independent basic service set so ad hoc means without any infrastructure they don't need any middleman they can form an ad hoc fashion and this way this node for example can communicate directly with another user another node so what happens here these ipss are also known as wireless ad hoc networks ad hoc networks means without any infrastructure they can just communicate with each other and if they are going to communicate with each other then definitely one of the stations or one of the nodes has to initiate the process by advertising itself this will start for example this wants to communicate with that of course this must initiate the conversation and this must initiate the exchange a request so in this way they will establish a connection in between them and then they will be able to communicate with each other so yes this was the last slide and, uh, and thank you thank you very much for your time and hope to see you in some other video